Rebuilding a Stuart 5A steam engine, part 8. Putting it all back together, fitting the valve gear and setting the valve timing. If you need to know more about setting valve timing on steam engines, it's a good idea to watch my other video on the Steam Engines for Beginners series, in which I outline the setting of valve gear on a 5A. This is the valve gear off this particular 5A, and I'm currently giving it a good clean. It's quite rusty and pitted, and I'm using wet to dry sandpaper, this is 400 grit. I could use my polishing spindle to do this, and it would probably be quicker and easier, but it tends to round the edges of the metal, and I prefer the finish that you get by using wet or dry sandpaper. When I'd finished cleaning up the valve gear, it was time to bolt it back onto the engine. It's held to the engine with two 4BA bolts on this small gun metal bracket. Here's a useful tip. If you're using a socket to fit lots of small nuts and bolts, the sockets are generally too long, and the nut or bolt will go right down into the socket. But if you put a piece of paper in the socket, it holds the nut or bolt to the front of the socket and makes it much easier to initially engage the thread in the tapped hole. The next part to assemble is the die block, that's a small phosphor bronze part. Normally these die blocks are made from a piece of cast iron, but phosphor bronze is just as good. And as I mentioned frequently, do not over tighten the bolt, or the pin in this case, and squash together the valve fork. Whenever you reassemble a steam engine, or any engine for that matter, it's really important to make sure that nothing binds, and everything that's meant to move freely, does move freely. And as you can see here, once I get past an initial sticky bit, the valve gear moves very freely indeed. Mechanical stiffness is accumulative, and no, that's not the instructions on a pack of Viagra. What I mean by that term, is the more parts that you fit to the engine, that are out of alignment and stiff, the more running friction there will be, and therefore immediately there will be much more wear. Sometimes this can be a really fiddly job and it will drive you mad. So if you start to lose patience and start to get exasperated, it's best to stop doing it and go and do something else. I recommend doing this before it affects your sanity and before you check into the insane asylum. Put it down and leave it alone. Well, that was the advice given to me by my electric shock therapist anyway. While I've been talking about electric shock therapy and insane asylums, I've been cleaning up the eccentric straps. And to do this, I'm just using a piece of Brasso wadding. This is brilliant stuff, it's been around for years, and I use it all the time. In fact, the smell in my workshop consists of oil, Brasso, a little hint of cellulose thinners, mixed with the fumes from the white spirit that I use to clean my paintbrushes, and the general aroma of paint drying. There's not much of a smell of industrial coolant because it's very nasty stuff that and I don't use it. Although, I suppose in the mix there is a slight amount because from time to time I have used coolant in the lathe. It's all very well in an industrial CNC machine to see the coolant slopping everywhere, but it's not terribly good when it slops everywhere in the home workshop. Back to the steam engine rebuild, and as you can see, I'm just finishing off the cleaning up of the eccentric straps. I do notice that the eccentric rods on this engine and not made like they are on the drawing, but you can't have everything, at least they work. I don't have a full drawing for a 5A steam engine, but I do have a drawing for the reversing gear, because I once bought some castings from Stuart's and it came with those. So here is a still image of the two cleaned up eccentric straps. Time to look at the eccentric sheaves. The first eccentric sheave has a key in it. As you can see, the slot matches with the one on the crankshaft, and I really do hope this is in the right position because it looks slightly off to me. But anyway, as a starting position, I will set the eccentric at 90 degrees to the crank web. One of the first things that I notice whilst doing this job is that the eccentric rods do not align with the expansion link. So I'm having to move the eccentric sheaves out a little bit to compensate for this. I'm a bit puzzled why this is the case, but it's the way it is and I have to live with it. As I mentioned earlier, I'm taking great pains not to put anything on the engine that's out of alignment. Because the machining tolerances on this engine are far too close, and it's stiff to start with. Things should slacken off once I get it to run. I'm having a quick look at the valve travel. And by seeing how far the lever moves, I can see how far the valve's going to move. And it's not good really. The valve is not in the right position, and there isn't much thread on the top part of the valve spindle to allow me to move the valve higher 
and then use the lock nuts, but I should be able to get the top lock nut onto two or three threads to lock it all in place. And if you're doing a job like this, always be aware that the slide valve must float slightly, never clamp it to the valve spindle. Whilst checking this valve alignment, I noticed that the lever is loose on the shaft, so I quickly removed the assembly from the steam chest and tapped out the pin, which was a parallel pin which I'm removing with a pair of pliers. I'm going to replace this with a taper pin, but before I can do that, I need to ream out the hole using a taper reamer. A taper pin across a shaft like this will make for a very secure fixing of the arm to the shaft. Once I've reamed out the hole to a sufficient depth, and you have to be very careful that you do not ream the hole out too far, I just tap the pin in very carefully with a hammer. Once I refitted the assembly to the engine, and this time I've put the clamping nut on, that's the thing with the arms sticking out of it at the bottom, things appeared much better. The birds started to sing and the sun came out, and I was able to accurately position the slide valve. And it only just works as I said earlier. It's right at the top of its travel, but it'll be okay. The engine times reasonably well. Admission is not quite as early as I would like it, but you can't have everything. And after I replaced the steam chest cover and rotated the engine by hand to make sure that nothing fouls in forward and reverse gear, this is very important. If something's going to foul up and you put lots of compressed air into an engine, it really will foul up. So try it by hand because you have the option on stopping immediately if you find something wrong. So I'm lubricating the engine with a mixture of machine oil and steam oil. And I'm not missing any moving parts out on this. It's very important. The first few revolutions of an engine can damage it if it's not lubricated properly. Time now to admit some compressed air. I'm very carefully rotating the flywheel with my left hand, being very careful not to lose any fingers. That is, assuming that it's going to run. But there is something wrong, it's blowing air all over the place. Ah, yes, I need to fit these things. These are the drain cocks and I completely forgot about them. So I'll put these in place. When I finish the engine, these will be perfectly straight. I'll use shim washers. So once again, I turn on the compressed air supply and rotate the flywheel. And this is feeling slightly better. And it runs, and it's horrible. This is not running properly at all. Because I've done quite a few rebuilds and builds of steam engines over the years, including locomotives and things, I do know what's going on here. I know exactly what the problem is. The main problem I'm having, apart from the engine sounding like a pneumatic drill having an asthma attack, it's draining the air very quickly, far too quickly. I only have a low capacity air compressor, but it should last longer than this. I have a solution, but you will have to wait until the next episode. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.